A couple of weeks ago, Louis Rossman, who's big on right to repair advocacy for Apple products, released a video with the title, Apple watching and logging every app you open with new OS. I want to first of all explain exactly what he's talking about. What is Apple doing specifically in the new version of Mac OS called Big Sur and how is this a concern or if this is even a concern? And does this have anything to do with the other Apple products or just Big Sur? Now, this comes at an interesting time because Apple also released the MacBook Pro 13 with a game-changing M1 chip that just makes the Apple product line seem outstanding. It's like opposing purposes. In one case, you start to wonder about Apple's commitment to privacy, though they keep stating that as a mantra. And on the other hand, they come up with attractive technology that for some of you make it hard to resist. I'll try to give an even-handed view of where Apple stands in the realm of privacy versus technology. Maybe this will give you education on whether or not you should buy Apple products. It's coming up. My videos are posted ahead of YouTube on odyssey.com, so follow me there using the link in the description. So what was Louis Rossman talking about when he says that Apple is watching you on Mac OS? What he was reading on his video was a blog post by a Jeffrey Paul who made the initial accusation. And I'll post a link to the blog in the description. According to Jeffrey, Apple spying was accidentally discovered apparently by people studying the traffic of Big Sur, the latest Mac OS release. Studying the traffic is called packet sniffing. Specifically, what was discovered by these people is an Apple implementation of something called OCSP or Online Certificate Status Protocol. What this is, is that if any application uses a security certificate, often called a TLS certificate, then Apple verifies that the certificate is still valid. A request is sent to an OCSP server, which then validates the certificate. The purpose of this is also to authenticate the certificate holder so you know where it comes from. And presumably this is to prevent malware from fake apps. Now, personally, I think the way this was discussed all over YouTube with anything related to Apple appears to be overblown to me. Now, I agree that there are serious issues with Apple but the scary headlines make it seem that this is very big and particularly new. The fact of the matter is that OCSP is not a specific Apple issue. It is commonly used by all browsers and probably used by all operating systems. There's a specific implementation of Apple here that caught someone's attention and I'll get back to that. But frankly, the extra data provided by OCSP in this particular use which is Mac OS app usage, is not all that important. Again, the purpose of OCSP is to validate a certificate. If you go to Firefox and pull up a website like youtube.com, it will read the certificate and it will indicate a validity date, but it needs to go to the certificate authority to verify that the certificate is not fake. In the case of YouTube, the certificate authority is a Google company called GTSCA 101. All certificate authorities are forced to offer OCSP services where they can validate the certificates that they issue. For example, one of the most popular certificate authorities is Komodo. If they issue you a TLS certificate for your domain, then their servers will get the validation requests from most browsers to see if your certificate is valid and not expired. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a problem. It's a problem because if Komodo issues a certificate for a political website, it would then be possible to harvest the IP addresses of OCSP requests, and then it can then be collected by Komodo and sold to third parties. But that's the same as a DNS provider. The DNS provider can also do the same thing. This may not be all that material for a big site like google.com, apple.com, or youtube.com, but selectively, it could possibly profile users of a smaller site. What makes the Apple implementation particularly interesting is that when you make a Mac OS app for Apple, you have to use a certificate issued by Apple. So Apple becomes 
the certificate authority. Apple can then verify if an app has a correct certificate in order for it to run on your computer. Apple then has its own OCSP servers that can capture the information and they can then collect the same data that a Komodo could capture, which is the app you are using and the IP address. So with this, Apple can track apps from the Mac OS store. The way this was accidentally discovered was when Big Sur was first released, the ocsp.apple.com server got overloaded and that made people wonder. And by a little bit of analysis of network packets, they discovered that the OCSP traffic was the cause of the slowdown. In normal use, supposedly Apple will abstain from making an OCSP request if there's no internet. So that is why if you're not connected to the internet, everything seems to work like normal. And the other proposition made was that if you use a VPN, then Mac OS will supposedly bypass the VPN and your IP address will be revealed anyway with this OCSP request. Hopefully I've explained the main problem and now we'll put this into perspective. First of all, as I alluded earlier, this is a general problem with the use of OCSP and it is not unique to Apple. It is only a different issue with Apple because they issue all the certificates for all apps on the Apple stores. However, there is a more massive problem than this minor little OCSP issue in macOS. It is a problem that is an extremely dangerous issue in all iOS phones, Google phones, and Mac OS. Forgetting about OCSP for a moment, all apps compiled for iOS, Android, and Mac OS include code from Apple and Google. On these platforms, they force you to use their development libraries, so a lot of Apple code is already in every app. This means that they don't need OCSP. This apps can report to HQ directly, and many of them report constantly, just even from the very basic feature called notifications. And they don't even need the regular IP address. They have several more accurate device identifiers, including the Apple ID, the MAC address of the device and even the non-routable IPv6 address of the phone, which also has the MAC address. This is what I call a device fingerprint. Let me just classify the general problems with spyware into three categories. One is identity, second is telemetry, and the third is the actual data. All these devices can collect all of these three, and not just the limited data in OCSP. This is a problem in Windows 2. In fact, that was my last video talking about how to remove the identity and telemetry in our Windows installation. Fortunately, in Windows, you can actually remove most of this, something that I cannot do on Mac OS or iOS. It's a bit amusing to me that anyone would panic about OCSP on a Mac OS. The reason this is funny is that I've been talking over and over about the telemetry and spyware on an iPhone and Google Android. Like I said, these platforms don't even need OCSP. Apple can check certificates before an app can get on the Apple App Store. So it doesn't really have to check certificates using OCSP as you start an app on a phone. They do OCSP on Mac OS, I presume, because you can sideload an app without going through the Apple Store. But the telemetry on an iOS device is absolute. It knows when the apps start, stop, how long they're used, this is clearly even more data than that found on Mac OS. And I already mentioned the notifications, which can even be more specific. Some actual message traffic shows up in the notifications. And beyond that, iOS has additional sensors that can supply additional data while the app is used, such as location, sensor information, IP addresses, MAC addresses, IMEI, MZ, and on and on. I discuss much of this in another video called Dump Apple and Google Phones. So we can't really look at OCSP as the main culprit here since there's a bigger philosophy involved here, and that is your devices are used to monitor you in a much more major way than is indicated by this OCSP discussion. Clearly, Apple has enough information to profile you by religion, political beliefs, financial status, sexual orientation, and even behavior. 
And there's no doubt that an Apple device knows who you are since you pay directly to them with a credit card. You are logged in in each device with the same Apple ID. So we have several elements that makes this ultra serious. It is practically impossible to use an Apple device fully without revealing your real identity with an Apple ID, which is then connected to credit cards with your real name and address. And finally, there's the actual data derived from you, and that is what you store on iCloud, in your photos, in your communications, and what you tell Siri and any Apple app. So it's identity, telemetry, data. That is full-scale tracking. This is what you've all equipped Apple to have, a company that is supposedly interested in privacy. I want to discuss this further, but I want to make it clear that it isn't that Louis Rossman and Jeffrey Paul are wrong in pointing out these Apple flaws in ensuring privacy. I'm just saying that it's like nibbling at the edges of the problem. I purchased many Apple products in the past and was a big supporter because of their innovations. I've had every Apple product imaginable, but I stopped buying Apple products. Philosophically, I'm at odds with their ecosystem at so many levels. I'm disgusted at their ability to be a choke point of information by blocking things at the App Store. Their products are closed devices. You can't write software without having to go to the Apple police. They can censor you if you don't toe the line. I see where they catered to a non-techie crowd and made a secure device. And it is true. I think cybersecurity experts would agree that an iOS device is one of the most secure devices in the planet. But being secure doesn't mean it's private. Basically, Apple's able to hoard information about all its users in the world. It knows everyone's location. It can, if it wants, do contact tracing without bothering with any app. After all, it knows all your identities in addition to your location data. This technique, by the way, is called geofencing. It knows your every move. Some of you even dictate your every thought to it using Siri, something that I've already revealed to you is stored in an Apple database with the transcription. Some of you dictate even full memos using Siri. So Apple can go way beyond simple telemetry. They have actual personal data, your thoughts. Now you see why I'm not concerned about OCSP. It seems like nothing. Wow, what an awesome amount of power to give to a single company. Well, we split it up among a few companies. MAGA, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon. I already have videos talking about the others, so I'll focus only on Apple here. The thing about Apple is that they actually spend a lot of advertising dollars giving you the fake news that they are the privacy option. And this is false on so many levels. One of the many fake facts that circulate is that iMessage is encrypted. Is that true? Well, actually it is true that iMessage is encrypted, but it is encrypted with Apple keys, so it can be decrypted by Apple. Everything on the Apple network that is supposedly encrypted by Apple can be decrypted by Apple. Everything. In fact, if you sync iMessage with your Mac, then the messages are automatically decrypted and kept in the application data folder in plain text. The encryption in the whole Apple ecosystem is to prevent outsiders from entering a closed system. Everyone inside the closed system can of course see everything. And in spite of what is promised with privacy as iPhone, for example, it is also true that though they will not unlock their iPhone for the FBI, Three-letter agencies already partake in Apple data by many programs that allow access to their data. Privacy is iPhone is a publicity stunt. Secure the device, but they make you willingly expose your data anyway all over the internet from their cloud services to device fingerprinting. Clearly, access to iCloud data has been revealed in the press, and geofencing has also been used to determine who was at certain locations at certain times. I don't know, folks, why would you be so eager to empower a single company with a particular agenda with all this information? Some of you think that this collection of data is of no importance since you personally think you have nothing to hide. But what if they use this information to blackmail someone in government to push a certain issue? Apple already demonstrates that it can stop certain information from flowing through the Apple ecosystem 
with censorship. And most people don't complain if you agree with what's being censored. But this is a dangerous power being concentrated in the hands of a few. Once again, the behaviors of Apple devices conform to the Orwellian society in the book 1984. And in fact, we are beyond what's in the book. Apple and the entire group of MAGA, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, are elements of centralized control. This is not anywhere near the original intent of the internet. And the population is asleep at the wheel. All they understand is that new tech is exciting and must be good. Tech, especially exciting new tech like the Apple M1 ARM chip, is in fact attractive. The M1 chip appears to dominate computing in particular tasks like graphical display and coding and lower power. I like the concept a lot. While I hesitate to even think about using an Apple MacBook Pro 13 because I don't know how I can use it privately without feeding the beast. Same with an iPhone. I've said in another video that my iPhone 10, which is the last iPhone I bought, no longer leaves home. It's a shame because it apparently has desktop level performance. But I don't need desktop level performance spying on my life. By the way, that iPhone and other iOS devices in my house, including iPads, and older iPhones are not updated. They're still on iOS 13.4, their pre-contact tracing OS. Sorry Apple, I am not going to give you more data. So nowadays, I stay away from Apple, completely. I think their mantra about privacy is BS. Their products and ecosystem are closed source and completely hidden, so whatever they claim cannot ever be verified. Any statements on what they claim cannot be taken seriously. Some guy argued in my video that Apple Pay is completely private and that I don't know what I'm talking about and that I'm wrong to distrust it. Well, I guess I must be wrong. I wasn't aware that Apple's APIs and SDKs were open source. I must have missed those documents that independently reviewed the source code. Many of you trust Apple because they say you should trust them. Man, that's a lot of trust to give when they know everything about each and every one of you that uses their products. You know why I like using the Google phones? It's because the Google phones have no identity. It has no Google ID, no Apple ID. I never log into the phone. It has no telemetry. And any data I send out becomes bad data without an identity. Fortunately, I can remove Google from Google Android and remove the telemetry as well. I'm given options. I can even remove the telemetry from Windows. It's a lot of work, but it can be done. But there's no way to the Apple an Apple device. It was never meant to be your device. You just rent it. In summary, OCSP is a distraction. It is a minor capability inside the bigger privacy invasions of Apple devices. I hope I gave you helpful information and if you want more of this, please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. I have so much information here and it takes a while to get the full picture. Thanks again to my patron supporters and those who buy my products. The links for both are in the description. This channel does not survive from YouTube ads so it really needs your help to keep it going. See you next time.